And let's just take a look at how some of our programmes line up this evening on Central. Robbie Coltrane stars in our film The Fruit Machine, that's at 10.30. And of course Saracen take us into Africa a little earlier at 9.20. Now, the news. <laughs> The news from ITM. Police deny Broadwater Farm raid was a failure. Some local community leaders have said that yesterday's drugs raid involving 200 policemen was completely over the top. The local police reject that and say drug dealers there were tipped off about the raid. Nine people have been charged with public order offences. Nearly 30 people are still being questioned about drugs offences. It was a quiet Saturday at Broadwater Farm few people about and the only sign of yesterday's raid the continual presence of patrolling police officers that presence was particularly heavy around the central shopping area which yesterday saw 200 officers make almost 40 arrests at the estate's community office anger at the scale of that operation some councillors feel it set back any improvement in relations with the police here the operation last night was completely over the top um, so many people knew about it in advance, dozens of media people knew about it in advance, and we don't believe that that kind of operation um, achieves the results the police want. Scotland Yard admit that leaks of information did affect the outcome of the raid, but they deny claims that the operation was a media exercise which went wrong. I've taken the risk and I'm expecting the community to appreciate why I've taken it, to arrest dealers, um, I have arrested them and hope I can prove that to the satisfaction of courts um, and then the community will understand why and agree the risk was worth taking. Tonight, 28 people are still being questioned. Police say further charges are imminent. Robert Hall, ITN, North London. Los Angeles police have put on show the world's biggest drug haul. The cocaine worth $20 billion is thought to have come from Colombia and they think there could be other warehouses full of drugs still to be discovered. A citizen's tip-off led police to the warehouse and the biggest drug seizure ever. 20 tons of cocaine with a street value of up to $20 billion. It gave me really cold chills when I walked in and looked at it, and the magnitude of it has really not sunk into me yet. It's enormous, uh, and it's going to bring tears to a lot of people's eyes tonight, because it's not going to be on the street. Police also seized 10 to $20 million in cash. They're still counting it, and they made three arrests. They believe the drugs belong to two of the notorious Colombian drug cartels who are running the warehouse as a national distribution center for cocaine. We are trying to send a message back to the Colombian cartels that we are not going to allow them to take over the United States. It's long been suspected that Los Angeles was replacing Miami as the major drug center. This find seems to provide some proof of that. Ken Reese, ITN, in the United States. Labour's leader Neil Kinnock has arrived in Brighton for his party's annual conference. Delegates are expected to approve the party's wide-ranging policy review, which will form the basis for Labour's next election manifesto. The Labour leadership is billing this conference as the most important in the run-up to the general election. This week, delegates will be asked to endorse the policy review, Labour's blueprint for getting Neil Kinnock into number 10. The review is backed by the big unions, so even contentious policies like defence and labour law will get through. But the leader of the GMB says it's important that conference appears united. We should avoid personal attacks and we should avoid some of that, those elements of self-indulgence where we just push an argument a little bit too far to get an extra clap which actually has no uh, effect on the public other than making the Labour Party look bad. Some delegates are angry because they won't be allowed to make amendments to the policy review. Uh, if we're just going to pass the policy review as it stands, we vote against it or for it, then there isn't much choice. And I believe that there has to be a choice. But the leadership believes it's essential that this conference sends the right message to the electorate that the policy review isn't a flash in the pan, and Labour is ready with policies for government. Kim Catcherside, ITN, Brighton. A British soldier has appeared in court in Belfast accused of leaking secret files on terrorist suspects. Sean Cunliffe was charged under the Official Secrets Act. Soldiers of the Ulster Defence Regiment guarded the courthouse where the accused was taken early this morning after being questioned by detectives. He'd been flown to Northern Ireland yesterday from his base at Dortmund in West Germany. In court was 20-year-old Sean Robert Cunliffe, a gunner of the Royal Artillery's Air Defence Regiment. 
He was charged with possessing and communicating a collection of photographs, names and addresses of people which had been entrusted to him in confidence between the 17th and the 21st of September. It was, said the Crown lawyer, a charge relating to national security. It was on the 21st of September that The Sun published photographs it received of eight men and one woman, together with a note claiming they were known IRA terrorists. The accused soldier was given bail and will now return to a barracks in England where he'll stay until his next court appearance in eight weeks' time. Bill Neely, ITN, Belfast. Chinese leaders have ordered a security clampdown in Beijing on the eve of celebrations to mark the 40th anniversary of the Communist Revolution. Hundreds of soldiers have been rehearsing anti-riot manoeuvres in Tiananmen Square. Mao Zedong's great communist dream has survived 40 years and Beijing is preparing for the party. But the celebrations in Tiananmen Square will be subdued. No military parades this year as the government tries to project an image of peace and stability. The icons of communism, worker, peasant and soldier, now stand in place of the goddess of democracy statue crushed by troops on June the 4th. Hardline socialism is being reimposed. Though the government claim life is back to normal, martial law is still in force. Secret police are everywhere. Only those politically acceptable are being invited to the festivities. By night, security forces check citizens' movements. Identity cards are now compulsory to keep undesirables out of the capital. There's been a new wave of show trials and executions to silence any opposition. They're using both threats and rewards. The markets have been filled with produce by order to guarantee a good weekend and to buy goodwill from a disenchanted public. Thousands of extra troops have been drafted in to make sure no one spoils the party. Jeremy Thompson, ITN, Beijing. The Hollywood star Jaja Gabor has been found guilty of slapping a Beverly Hills cop. She'll be sentenced next month and could face 18 months in prison. During her trial, Miss Gabor gave a vintage performance and she remained unrepentant even after the verdict. I am very disappointed. I can't believe in a country as great as ours that a six foot four policeman can beat up a lady of five foot four, uses dirty language like she was a street walker, beats her up. The other policeman lifts her skirt and says, I want to see if you really share the Gabor and you still I am guilty. Late news tonight at nine. It's been a glorious autumn day for most of Britain today. Mind you, the sunshine makes all the difference. In Leeds, for instance, where they've had unbroken sunshine, temperatures of 22. But Northern Ireland and in the southeastern corner, where it's mostly cloudy, temperatures struggling into the teens. Not very much will change overnight tonight. Clear skies for many parts, but the southeastern corner, and again the far northwest, a few spots of drizzle and a ground frost in many places. For tomorrow, lots of sunshine for most of Britain, I think. Even the southeast, a brighter day tomorrow, just East Anglia and Kent there, seeing rather a lot of cloud. And northern Scotland as well, a few spots of drizzle, but most places dry and sunny and therefore quite mild as you might expect. 18 for instance, that's a fine 64. The far north though, 13, that's a cold 55. That's it from me then. I'll see you again later this evening after the late news. Until then, here's tomorrow's summary.